continue with our second uh, panel session. Our last uh, speaker is uh, Barb uh, Jacobson. Uh, she's an advice worker at a small central uh, London charity which helps people with benefits, housing and uh, debt issues. She has been a community organizer for women uh, rights, housing, healthcare and uh, welfare in London for over 30 years. Um, Mrs. Jacobson is currently a coordinator of Basic Income UK and uh, chair of uh, Unconditional no, Basic. No, no. Okay, okay. Uh, of Unconditional Basic Income uh, Europe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me, and thank you, especially Sebastian, for organising this um, and the. Um, the Liberal Group for helping with this and the Polygon, which is because it's such a great place. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the terms that we use when, when we're talking about the economy and especially as it relates to the pilots and what we're measuring and the things that we kind of look, that we look at. Um, so my, the, the title of my, of, of my, um, my speech is, what do we mean when we talk about productivity and the labor market? And this should also relate to when we're talking about degrowth and other, other issues around the economy as well as uh, basic income itself. Okay, the first thing to tackle is the gross domestic product. Um, I, whoops, let's get that up. Um, of course, people are aware that, I don't know if people are aware, but there was a decision made uh, at the, after World War II uh, to not include uh, household work and some forms of agricultural work in the GDP. So then that means that, that we're really missing a very, a very large uh, chunk of the economy. Um, productivity, of course, is, is not defined in terms of how useful an activity is to the rest of society, whether it actually produces good things, um, but whether, whether a good or service can be exchanged for money. That's the only thing. This means that if I'm paid to wash someone's clothes, I'm adding to the gross domestic product. But if I do this for love for my children, that does not add to gross domestic product. I think this is a really important point. It's one that, we've, that, that feminists have been talking about for about 30 years. Um, however, um, if much of this paid work, if much of this unpaid work were counted, the value of it um, as many, many estimates say would be equal or exceed or be more than uh, the amount of product, what is called productive work, that is the work that is exchanged for money. Uh, considered in economic terms, uh, this work then is an ex externality. And I think there's a real problem with externalities of all kinds. This is one particular one, but another that we, that we often talk about is pollution and resource extraction. Um, that, you know, we, when we get a, a, to get a picture of the whole economy, uh, we need to also talk about these, what, what are now called externalities, and somehow figure out how to bring them into our discussion. Um, if this work were, uh, of course, if this work were not done, society would collapse. So then we wouldn't have an economy, <laughs> right, to even talk about, and I think that's a really important point to, to remember. Okay, so there are those, those who do this work, uh, whether that's for children or increasingly for elders, uh, we face impoverishment if it interferes with our paid work. That is, if it interferes, if we can't do a job which is paid on top of the caring work that we do, that means that uh, we'll be very poor. And it means also that we often lose a sense of, of citizenship um, this was uh, talked about most recently in the UK by a woman who, called, who wrote a book called Liberating Motherhood. And she talked about how when she decided to stay at home to look after her children, uh, she suddenly lost her citizenship. Okay, because people, you know, they ask you, well, what do you do? And if you say, well, I'm looking after my kids, that's somehow not a job. Okay, the basis, the basis on money also means that work, services, and goods, which are damaging to human health, are included in the GDP. Okay, think about that. So we've got weapons, we've got very polluting industries, we've got a number of things which are included in the GDP, and when we're talking about degrowth, are we really talking about degrowth, or are we talking about a better kind of growth, 
I think that's the question I would put for people who are talking about um, environmental issues. What it also means, it makes it look as though a Goldman Sachs banker earning millions is somehow more productive than a nurse or rubbish collector. And yet I would ask people, who would we miss? All right, if, that, if these people disappeared, would we miss the banker or would we miss the rubbish collector? All right, I think, you know, again, you know, when we're talking about, and this is relevant to the pilots, when people talk about, well, people are more economically active if they have basic income or they're more productive or whatever, okay, we're also kind of missing part of this element of the things that we, that we do which are not paid for and or the things that we do which are very low paid, which we really need to happen. I would also argue that the way we look at, at gross domestic product is backward. Um, it's part of this, the problem with economics and the, and the whole uh, discussion of economics in general, that um, it privileges monetization of resources and monetization of work, uh, which, you know, again, the resources and, and t human time is scarce or limited, over the distribution of money, which is the only resource that is entirely created by humans. I made this point recently at a mosque that, that I have yet to find the holy book which says that God created money, all right? And I think it's really important when we think about, you know, when we're talking about, well, would basic income do this to the economy or would it do that to the economy? We can't, we also have to remember that there is, that, that money itself is not, and whether we can pay for it, that money itself is something that we create. So, um, so yeah, so that means that the way we talk about, you know, because we measure growth as a good thing, um, that means that we end up using more of our scarce resources and we, we, we make that's, that's a good thing, whereas actually we, maybe we should be using money more and maybe that goes into money creation and there are a lot of, there are a lot of discussions around that. Okay, finally the labor market. Um, again, what it is looked at when we talk about the labor market is only the exchange of labor for money. So this leaves out all the things that we do for pleasure. We do do things for pleasure in this society, hopefully. <laughs> um, the things we do for love. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Sorry, that's my last slide, so anyway. It leaves out the things we do for love. It leaves the things that we do for pleasure. It leaves out all the things that actually make society cohere and, and make society livable. So there's a kind of, I think there's a big problem, okay, when we're, when we're very econometric about things, you know, we're looking at the amount of work or the amount of, the, uh, the amount of paid work and all of that sort of thing, then we're kind of um, talking about those things as though there isn't a whole other side of life. And I think that relates to something that Jose said earlier about um, that we need to be talking about the cultural effects of basic income as much as, as, much as the, econo the e economic effects. So the number of people, so this labor market is the number of people willing and available to do work for money in relation to the number of place, places willing to hire them. Um, the people doing the work, no matter how useful it is to society or to the people around them, are not counted as economically active unless they also do something in return for money. And again, this is a huge problem. Um, that we, you know, when we're looking at whether people, so I think this is a real problem for the pilots, as that's one reason why I wanted to speak now as opposed to earlier, um, because most of the pilots are actually looking, are much more interested in whether people are this economically active rather than, say, happy, okay, or fulfilled, or, you know, other, the other sorts of things that we can be as humans. Um, the other assumption in, the, in this discussion of the labor market is that, uh, in the term, is that both employers and employees are equally free in the marketplace. So the assumption is that em employers, that as much as employers are free to hire, sorry about the written thing because it was a bit quick. Um, the assumption is that the, the employers are as free to hire, or not, as workers are to, are free to refuse work, which is either unsuitable to their skills or damaging to their health. And I think we can all agree that that actually isn't true, all right? As long as people have to uh, do a job in order to get an income, in order to survive, uh, they will do a lot of different things which are not necessarily good for their health or other people's health 
or for the environment. And I think this is one thing that, that basic income really could address. Uh, whether the pilots will be looking at this, I really don't know. Uh, and finally, um, there's also the assumption made that, uh, that the labor market is the best way to decide what needs to be done in society. So by excluding self-directed work, which is not done for money, we are not getting the whole picture, all right? So uh, the other thing, you know, it's like as we move forward as a society, it's been, it's been said earlier that, you know, we're looking at extinction, basically. So we need to also be looking at how we can not be extinct or how we can move forward as a, as a society or as a species in a way which will mean that we have the, you know, that the earth is available for our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc. I think we're, you know, whether it's climate change or pollution, we are kind of hitting a point where we make a decision either to, either to deal with those things or we don't. But the current market system is not dealing with this and neither is the state. And that's one reason why I really support basic income because I think it would support um, activity which neither the state nor the market currently supports. And that's all I have to say, thanks. Uh, thank you for interesting um, presentation. Um, any questions, comments? Well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, she came. <laughs> uh, I'm not, not sorry anymore uh, because uh, Barb has sent, uh, has mentioned a problem which is uh, long enough in my my position, and that is what is work. Or what is labor? I mean, does it mean only uh, paid work or any work? And this is just the, the question Barb uh, atten put attention to, that it's a lot of production work. Uh, it means uh, work which is very important for uh, for the society and which is not paid and yes it's m mostly this is the women's work but not only so so th this uh, is one of the reasons why UBI could uh, make a bit a little bit of attention to these kinds of work. Well, thank you. Any other comments? Excuse me. So I was uh, very intrigued by uh, your presentation, Barb, uh, because in fact I, you developed a, a, a strain of thought that is uh, very near, um, very very close to mine. Uh, at least that's how I feel it. Uh, but um, I'm agreeing totally about the fact that uh, there are uh, unpaid um, society. Uh, uh, useful works done um, by individuals uh, to society uh, or other individuals and that should be they should be counted in spite of the fact that the um, um, public formal um, econometrics doesn't count it as important work but I would say I would like I would like to expand uh, expand uh, this logic you introduced in uh, and making a, a shift. Uh, maybe it's not just the fact that we are working. Uh, maybe it's a, the, the important fact is that some uh, some uh, productivity is done not necessarily by by uh, work, but by human behavior as such. Uh, 
You know, um, work could be defined just the activity that is purposely done. That's my opinion. And there are many activities, uh, everyday activities of, uh, of huge quantities of human beings that are not work in this sense, but they are productive. They are a base for, for raising, raising value of other people. Just the fact that we are passing a registration, uh, um, our products in the, the shopping bag, at the, uh, the register at the end, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, amounting to a possibility of the company that is uh, running the, the shop to uh, make an anal analysis of what are our habits uh, as, uh, as uh, consumers and so on. The fact that we are watching television is an opportunity for the companies that are measuring uh, the number of, uh, of people that are watching a certain program to establish the right price of the uh, the, 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 the uh, commercial spaces uh, for the program. And let's talk about the digitalization. We, it, today, it's the, it was till now, I think, the, 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 the huge uh, hole around its term. I, think, I don't remember that anyone really um, tried to include the, the, uh, all the things that are raised by the digitalization. You know, by the digitalization, we are commercial, we are, we are sending messages, public messages to each other that are visible to other people, and there are, there, these are messages, are opportunity to make commentaries and to make other uh, uh, flow of information that is uh, possibly also uh, uh, profitable to someone. Uh, public uh, televisions programs are, are um, having enormous uh, profits by just sending, uh, by just emitting um, um, the little videos made by privates in their spare time and the privates are, are well, have the satisfaction of being noticed by a certain public, but the, the television has a real profit of that, out of that. So, there is a work activity done by people and there is just normal life, let would say, you know, nowadays that is profitable to someone. And I would say, in my opinion, this is a, 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 a very powerful basis for claiming that public, that uh, uh, something like a universal basic income as a, as a generalization, or as a, as a um, uh, same, a certain amount that it should be, in a way, uh, the counter power, counter, what to say, counter pound, uh, what the term, uh, for, the, for, the, for this um, work and uh, non-work activity that is profitable, uh, it's a very powerful basis saying that we are deserving this money and not that it should be done out of moral, out of moral, uh, let's say, uh, activity, uh, moral standards of a social state. Um, I think that that's, it's very important because in this way we are reversing the, the, the major um, counterclaiming of people that are not, uh, that are, are against uh, basic income, Nam namely that we are getting money for nothing. We are not getting money for nothing, we are just pay in a, in a socially politically, socially generalized way for some activity that is um, profitable to society. And uh, I would say uh, to the end that this kind of uh, legitimation of uh, basic income, it's very well, uh, it can be combined with the Penian uh, legitimation that uh, it's saying that as citizens, but this is just uh, valuable as citizens, we are owners of uh, the profit made in the, of the territory um, that is uh, uh, managed by the political, political authorities of the certain country. Can I come back on that a little bit? Um, yeah, I agree with every word you said. Um, the only thing I would add is that I, what, one thing I wanted to say sort of toward, at the end of my presentation was that I'm not asking that, that the unpaid work actually be, you know, counted as such. 
Um, I think it's almost kind of dangerous if we start actually counting, you know, sort of making very econometric uh, decisions about what we do for each other, what we, you know, when, we're, when we do it for pleasure, or we do it for love or whatever, you know, that's not money. Um, I think it's very difficult to then, you know, it's, it's something I, that we dealt with. I, I was involved with a campaign group called Wages for Housework back in the 80s. And I mean, I think the, probably the, the best critique of that was that, well, it will end up monetizing a whole set of activities that we do for each other. All right, um, hold on, I'm not quite finished. But I mean, it's interesting, I mean, I think, you know, say with things like Facebook, all right, or Twitter, where we're actually adding value to those, those companies, I think, yes, we should expect a lot more back. And it's very interesting, all right, that the, that, you know, someone like Mark Zuckerberg is saying, well, we should have basic income, all right? I mean, whereas actually it might be quite easy, in fact, to make the Facebook platform pay people for engaging with it, all right, insofar as they get money from that. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. I think it's a very important point. Um, uh, I want uh, to make a, a difference between um, productivity and productivism. Um, productivity um, yeah, is uh, in a way how efficient uh, or, or how successful you are. And there, that's um, uh, the point I agree totally to you. Uh, there are several ways to be um, productive. Um, and even with basic income, we can choose which way we want to use to be uh, productive in uh, various ways. Um, the other uh, uh, term we have to think about uh, and the other principle or paradigm, social paradigm we have to think about is productivism. That is uh, just um, the, the goal. The more we produce whatever it is, uh, the, uh, the better it is. Uh, that is when people are, um, uh, productivism is possible when people are forced to um, work um, because they are in fear of uh, basic uh, insecurity uh, and even when they are forced in a social way uh, to consume more as they normally would do uh, when they ask themselves what do I um, uh, need really. Uh, when they are forced, um, yes, because of uh, social inequality, to uh, consume uh, only due to their status. Uh, that's not a real wish, that's not an authentic wish. And uh, that are all uh, structures, structures uh, sorry, which will foster um, yes, uh, the process or, or the uh, societal paradigm uh, I, I call productivism. And we have to differentiate productivity several ways and product productivism and basic income um, yes is a measure against the productivism and um, uh, a measure to um, have only authentic work and uh, for authentic con consumation any, any re reaction yes just a small question, um, because I want to relate this uh, discussion to the EU in itself. Um, so basic income in itself might not be able to change a society from one paradigm to another in terms of being productivist and then uh, valuing other kinds of work and so on. Uh, so we need alternative indicators and, and uh, uh, maybe other ways also to accompany uh, such a change and it's not only basic income. So in your mind, um, what would we requ require um, either at the national or at the European level to accompany this uh, change of, uh, of mind, this um, mindset and this evaluation of other activities? Um, I think what would be really interesting would be to look at behavior, um, as was mentioned before. Uh, one thing that was, that was really shown by the, by the Indian pilot uh, was a real change in the way people treated each other and the way that, that people existed in society. So even though it was less than subsistence, it was a third of subsistence that was given. Um, the fact that everybody was given the same, every individual was given the same amount made a huge difference in the way uh, girls and women were treated. 
Um, it made a huge difference in the way people with disabilities were treated in society. And I think those are sort the sorts of things that we need to be looking at as well as people's economic, you know, so-called economic activity. Does that answer your question, sort of? <laughs> It does at the, the personal level and in the framework of uh, pilot projects, but do you think, for example, uh, the EU should put in place some uh, alternative indicators to start uh, uh, changing the, the way we perceive growth? Uh, because you were mentioning that it's not so much degrowth, but it's another kind of growth, it's a qualitative growth that we might need, and um, should we need uh, some harmonized alternative indicators, either replacing GDP or as a complementary basket of indicators uh, to the GDP? Or we could look at GDP and actually see what, I, I would be very much in favor of GDP being divided up into what is, what is actually useful for people to survive and what is actually, you know, what is against people surviving. So I would put, say, you know, armaments as something which, you know, they're made to kill people, so therefore they're probably not the best thing, all right, for us to be making as a society. Now, if you go to, you know, the problem being, of course, is you go to a factory where they're making armaments and people are saying, well, we need the job. All right, so then what we need to be also then looking at is whether we can, with basic income, we can kind of shift that so that people are much more interested in making things which are, are conducive to, to human survival. So I would like to see the, the GDP actually change, you know, how we measure GDP change to to exclude the things that are not not good for, for, for societal survival. Thank you. Uh, we have a time problem, so we need to finish this uh, second uh, panel uh, session. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation. Another pause, <laughs> and uh, so we'll just begin with the third one. Cool.